Hey guys, welcome back to Music Business Today. I'm Hannah Renee. And I'm Kane Harrison. Hey, we're talking about production and producers yeah. mm -hmm. and the difference between independent and getting some high quality stuff. And we're exactly. going to follow that line all week, so stick around and we'll be back after this. Hi guys, welcome back. So first, I'm sure you guys are wondering what this lovely little award is sitting up here. I'll let Kane tell you a little bit it's more true. about It's true. We that. were super excited to win the next award. We won it for uh, mm -hmm. media and digital entertainment. So Hannah, I know we didn't mention in the last episode, but we're going to brag on it a little bit and we're going to put it up front <laughs> for the next few episodes. Um, but so, the Nashville, Enter uh, Nashville Entertainment Center, no, the Nashville Entrepreneur <laughs> Center here in town and the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. get together every year yeah. and have these wonderful awards and they have given it to us this year for um, digital media and entertainment, which I'm super excited awesome. about. Now, we got to have an incredible gala event, um, got up and accepted the award, thanked everyone, but um, thanks to you, Hannah, too, you're a big part of the award and we have so <laughs> many people, I think we have about 13 people yeah. working at Talkopolis now, which we love, and thanks to you guys so much as well for all your support, because you helped us just as much to win this wonderful yes. award. That's it's it, very Hannah. exciting. It's cool. We're looking forward to a really big 2016. Yes. Plenty of new shows coming up. Hannah and I will stick around with this show and we've got a couple of surprises. So, But let's get back into it, Hannah. Enough of yes. the bragging. So, so on to the more nitty-gritty side of producing, and that is contracts. I and love the nitty-gritty. Making sure that you get paid and you don't lose your rights or you know, even the same with the artists and kind of how to navigate those waters. Totally. Fairly. And so we're looking at both sides of the coin, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you sitting in at home or wherever you might be in home studio doing this all yourself, which is fantastic. Yep. It kind of means you own everything. Hopefully yeah. you've written the song for yourself. <laughs> Hopefully you've played all the parts on the record mm -hmm. or you've gotten some buddies to do and just yeah. paid them with beer. Um, the opposite side of the coin is when we start to get into a little bit more serious yeah. stuff where we're, we're hiring a producer. Involved. Yeah, mm -hmm. where we're hiring a producer where we're perhaps hiring studio mu musicians and things like that. And a lot of people, Hannah, don't know that, especially in America, now I say this because I yeah. know this doesn't happen in Australia, Yeah, is that the producer will get points on your album, creative mm -hmm. points. Now, it's kind of strange in the sense that you pay them a lump sum fee up front mm -hmm. for a service. Now, most of the time... Afterwards, they... They still take some on the back. Yeah. Make money off and of it. it can be, you know, they're saying um, here we're on digitalmusicnews.com. Um, they're saying anywhere between three and five percent. We kind of call that points. Um, mm -hmm. But three and five percent ongoing of sales. And uh, yep. so, which is, as I say, it's kind of strange because you've paid sometimes a lot of money to have a particular producer yep. come into the studio. Um, and you've paid them for a service, but then, as I say, they continue to get this revenue yeah. from you moving forward. Now, that can be negotiated at that, at that point, too, mm -hmm. just so you're aware. Yeah, that's but you true. should know that going in, that that is a possibility. Yeah. Um, they'll, be, they'll be skimming from the royalties. They will. They'll be mm -hmm. skimming from the royalties a little bit, as everyone does in the music industry. Yes. Um, but again, this that's is why true. one of the greatest things is now we have all this stuff at our fingertips to be able to do it ourselves mm -hmm. to a certain point. Um, where perhaps you'll have a little more say being able to move yeah. into a studio. Or to be able to at least minimize totally. you know, the number of extra people that you now, may need. Here's the big thing, Hannah. I'm all for as well. If, if you can get a, a uh, producer that's going to make you uh, make your music and take mm -hmm. it to another level, it's worth every bit of that 3 or 5% oh, that yeah. you're getting because usually you're buying into their relationships. Yep. Um, hopefully you're buying into their knowledge. Hopefully mm -hmm. they're getting into you, in, you into perhaps a studio yeah. that you may not have been able to. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they've then got um, some connections with labels that mm -hmm. they'll be shopping this stuff to. Um, and that's what a lot of independent yeah. artists look at. They're like, well, how can I be smart about this path of least resistance? If I use this producer, then he's got or she's got these. This avenue yeah. to be able to take me on to. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's kind of, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, but then there's also the flip side of the coin that as the producer, say, you come up with something that really adds to the album, mm -hmm. you essentially lose those rights you do. to that lick or whatever it you is do. that it, you've... It's a, it's, a, it's a finicky point and it's probably yeah. something that's not discussed in Nashville a lot, but mm -hmm. you know what? I love talking about stuff like this because everyone <laughs> should know about it because this is actually what goes on. Yeah. So most people in Nashville, um, now I'm throwing a very broad blanket here, so don't hurt me, um, <laughs> but you move, they try and find the best songs they possibly can, Hannah. So yeah. usually 
they don't write them themselves. Now, that happened a lot in the glory days. We had this great team of songwriters, mm -hmm. which Nashville was built on. Then we yeah. had these people who They're looked for the everyone. part, who could sing. Right, yeah. they would access these songs. That's changed a little bit, only mm -hmm. largely because of the fact, as we talk about, margins shrink, pie's gotten smaller, everyone still wants mm -hmm. a piece. Um, but you find these incredible demos, so these incredible studio musicians that have these amazing demos that might do a brilliant lick on a guitar or something, um, that maybe get paid 300 bucks to do the whole thing. Yeah. Then that demo gets pitched, and then usually what happens is they find a great producer, paid for by a record label, Mm -hmm. A great artist, all these things, and they essentially copy, literally yeah. copy, lick for copy lick, lick, vocal run for vocal run. They copy that and just kind of produce it bigger, yeah. polish it up, and that's what you end up hearing. And all you got was that three hundred dollar studio fee. That's true. That's all that that person gets. And so it, it is. I mean, it's it's difficult. I it's totally understand the process. Totally yeah. get it. But back to you're paying a producer to hopefully put their stamp of approval on it, not necessarily, yeah. and if they're taking points, not necessarily just copying something. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel that we've lost a lot of creativity with a lot of producers in this town who just yeah. have gotten into this thing of, you're buying into my relationships, not necessarily buying into my creativity yeah. to make this wonderful album that sounds exactly like you should sound well, even though I, you don't know about it as an artist. I was talking to someone actually last night about producing and uh, we, she was talking about uh, someone that she knows that's in the studio right now currently recording an album and they have two producers on the, pro mm -hmm. on the project, one of which has been around Nashville for ages, like well-known producer, has a history, has mm -hmm. the rapport, the other one, he's been producing for a decent amount of time, but he's still very young. He's very much in the digital age of producing versus the other one is sure. more in the analog. But having the two of them paired together as producers on this one project gives you a little bit more of a diversity totally. of what they're able to bring to the project. I totally get that. And we're actually going to talk about digital versus analog in the next episode, mm -hmm. I believe, yeah. um, which is a really cool and big topic. And having a mix like that, um, yeah. is, is pretty unique and brings some wonderful things to the table. But, you know, this translates across into all genres of music. I know we're in Nashville and we kind of always land in this independent, um, more band type yeah. stuff, uh, country especially. But you've got uh, some pop music coming out of Nashville. There's some totally. people always have. that are, yeah, but I mean, like, there's people, uh, like, local indie artists that are very pop, Super popular pop. radio oriented yeah. that are, getting some notoriety. And, but the same thing happens um, as we're seeing here. Again, digitalmusicnews.com, yeah. you guys can check this out yourselves. Same thing happens with Beats. I mean, mm -hmm. there's still demos that are done and they're still taken and elevated yeah. to a next level. And it's the licensing works kind of uniquely. Again, you're either paid for a service mm -hmm. or um, you, know, you can license your music and then people can go to your publisher or whatever it might be and yeah. then get a licensing agreement to utilize that stuff and you mm -hmm. then get paid royalties on the back end. Still not a lot of money for the creative part. And this is the part which, you know, frustrates me more and more. Yeah. Um, I like the idea that music is wonderful and fantastic. Mm -hmm. We're kind of losing a lot of that real raw creativity where you get into a room mm -hmm. um, and you collaborate with someone to make something bigger yeah. than either of you could have done by yourself. Well, because everything's so easily accessible, you can have someone that literally all they do all day is sit down in their studio and come up with different beats and different licks yeah. and then they try to sell those, yeah. you know, so as the artist, you just have to say, oh, this kind of fits my song, mm -hmm. let's let's try this beat, totally. you know, and it works out, you can buy the rights to it or, you know, but, I whatever. Mean, the, that collaboration process, I think, is when you have really beautiful, unique things come mm -hmm. out. Hannah, you and I can sit here, and you guys can't see this, but there is a green screen behind us, and I could say to Hannah, describe that color green, and she might say that it's the color of a crisp, cold cucumber. And I would say, Hannah, that green, to me, is the color of, seaweed in the Atlantic Ocean. The point being, we both see green, yeah. but we both see it completely differently. And this I think true. that that's when you collaborate with really great musicians or producers. It's the same thing, you have a message, but you can color it in different ways mm -hmm. that can have a broader brush stroke, therefore bringing more people into listening to what you've got to say. Yeah, no, it's very true. Mm. Um, which is the beauty and the downside to where music is these days. Is they know it. Yeah. You, do, you have amazing, uh, a plethora of talent out there that can help you create that mm -hmm. broader brushstroke, but sometimes it's actually getting out of your studio and going and collaborating yeah. with other people because it's easy to just sit down on your own. And as an independent artist, I have to say this too. I mean, there's been times when even, I know, I've just trusted my gut 
and I've yeah. had other people come to me. You know this as an artist as well, Hannah. Yeah. You know, there's times where you just have to go, this is exactly what my message is and this is exactly mm -hmm. what I want to say. You have to live by that decision, whether it does end up being a broad brush stroke or a really fine it's pen line, tiny, yeah. you still have to live by it. So if you feel that about something in particular and you're with, whether you're producing your own stuff or even if you're mm -hmm. in out of your element, you've got your first shot in, in, a, in a big studio with a big yeah. producer, it's still yours. You still get to say, this is who I am yeah. and this is what I want to represent. I think that's when really beautiful music comes out and we all love this it. This is true. Hey, again, we're talking about production this week um, and we're talking about our beautiful little next award here. <laughs> and <laughs> this is Music Business Today. Jump over to Music Business Today on Facebook. Like our page, you'll get all the updates. Don't forget mm -hmm. to follow Hannah on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter too. And check out talkopolis.com. We've just yep. re rejuvenated our website it, it looks, looks absolutely beautiful. fantastic we're now going by the way uh to brooklyn manhattan yeah. in new jersey louisville i mean we're we're, we're spreading our wings we are yeah. spreading our wings so we're so glad you could join in the journey and we'll see you guys next time on music business today